Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this lecture. This is lecture number 10, and we are dealing with uh, lenses, refraction, and stuff. In the previous class, we had done uh, questions on lens makers formula. And uh, in this class, we will go ahead and do more things on the same. We will be seeing a lens formula. I'll just give you a recap of what we had done in the previous class. We had seen the lens maker formula one by F is equal to mu minus one into one by R1 minus one by R2, where R1 is the first refracting surface. R2 is the radius of curvature of the second refracting surface. And mu is the refractive index of the lens with respect to the medium. We have also seen one formula, which is the lens formula, one by V minus one by U is equal to one by F. In all these formulae, when we are using F, which focal length are we talking about? Second focal length. Well done. We are talking about the second focal length, which is nothing but F2. I've also told you the sign convention for the second focal length. For a convex lens, the second focal length is positive or negative? For positive. a convex lens, it is positive. Well done. For a concave lens, it is negative. negative. Great. Similarly, we have seen that the power of a lens is given by the formula 1 by F, where again F stands for which focal length? Again, F stands for the second focal length. So this formula can be written as the formula for power. Am I clear with this? This formula, instead of writing it as 1 by F, I can simply write it as P. Now let us go ahead. And today we will see a lot of different, different problems that can be made from 1, 2, and 3. Also, we will see what happens when you bring two lens closer to each other? We will discuss that. Let us first move on to the first type of uh, problems that come. And again, instead of doing it as a problem, we would be doing them as important notes that you will have to remember as you move forward so we'll be doing them as notes but probably these are not notes whatever we have written in terms of notes are basically are basically problems that have already come i hope you understand it yes or no yes sir yes yeah, so i'm just trying to get it on screen Times it takes time. Okay, here I think it is there on your screens. Now, many a times I have seen questions where the lens, whether it's a concave lens or it's a convex lens, has been broken up into pieces. Now, what what they have done here, they have broken it. They have cut it along the line AB. I hope you can see this uh, diagram. I will just uh, enlarge it if I can. Let's see. I will enlarge it. This diagram is given in your sheet on page number 26. I hope you can see this. Yes or no? The entire diagram on the bigger screen. Now, what we see here is this lens has been cut along the line AB, which is nothing but the principal axis. It is cut along the line AB. When I cut it along the line AB, 
I will get two lenses, the upper part of the lens one and the lower part of the lens two. And I have just uh, made it upside down. So I have two lenses. Do we understand this? How I've cut it? Yes, sir. I've cut it from the center like this horizontally. I will get two lenses. As you can see, what is the important thing you have to notice over here? The important thing you have to notice over here is that the focal length of the two lenses, which I have just marked, the focal length of the two lenses, which I have just marked, this focal length is equal to F. That means when I'm breaking, when I'm cutting the lens like this horizontally, I will have two lenses. The focal length of these two lenses will be equal to F. Do we understand this? Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so you just need to draw this diagram. And what you need to do is also write this thing because instead of asking you just about the focal length, the question may be where they ask you what will be the intensity of light which is now passing through one of these small lens. Remember, I've already told you that intensity of a lens is proportional to its aperture, which is the diameter square. Yes or no? If you don't remember yes, it, you can still write it again. The intensity of light which is passing through a lens depends on how big the lens is. DSLR cameras, big cameras, big apertures, more is the intensity of light and that is why it can take pictures even in dark. Intensity of light that is passing through the lens depends on aperture square. Here, if you look at the aperture, the aperture, which is nothing but the diameter of the lens, this lens, the smaller lens, has half the diameter of the full lens. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. This lens, which is cut into two, one part of this lens is having half aperture. Therefore, intensity of this lens will be the intensity of the original lens divided by four. Do we understand why it is divided by four? Because the aperture is halved. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. If the intensity from this lens is I, intensity from the cut part would be I divided by four. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. I'll give you a minute to note these things down that I have just told you a minute to win it. Okay, sir. Okay, then um, before moving on to the next point, I would just like to elaborate this again. What is the power of a lens? The reciprocal of the focal length is known as the power of a lens. The SI unit is diopter, power is one by focal length in meter. It has to be in meter. If it is in centimeter, it will be 100 upon focal length in centimeter. That will give me the power of a lens in diopter. Do we all remember this? Do we all understand this? This is the power of a lens. Power of a mirror was minus one by F. Now yes, here, sir. here again, when I write, when I write the letter F, this F stands for the second focal length. Do we understand this? Yes, so I'll just give you a minute to note it down. Reason I again gave you the formula for power of a lens because we need to understand and remember what happens if I have two lens which are placed in contact with each other. If you see here, this is lens number one. It is a convex lens here. This is lens number two. Again, this is a convex lens. Doesn't matter what type of lens we are talking, we can have more than two lenses as well, which are kept in contact. It can be three, it can be four. 
they can be convex lenses they can be concave lenses they can be any combination of lenses whether they are concave or convex if i keep a number of these lenses in contact whatever arrangement i make that arrangement will act as a lens that arrangement will act as a lens the power of that arrangement will be p1 plus p2 here it is uh, only two uh, lenses so it is p1 plus p2 or the focal length of the combination will be 1 by f will be equal to 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2 or i can write it like this for a number of lenses the power of the combination will be summation of pi the focal length 1 by f will be summation of 1 by fi. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. So, if I have more than one lens kept in contact with each other, the power of the combination will be the summation of power or 1 by f of the combination will be summation of 1 by fi. Remember, this formula is valid for two or three or four or any number of lenses. This formula is also valid whether their lenses are different, whether they are convex lenses, whether they are concave lenses. This formula is valid for all types of combinations. I'll give you a minute to note this round. One thing you must remember, whatever formulae we are doing we are studying all formulae would have to be used with proper sign convention in this formula also the value of p1 if it is a convex lens will be positive the value of p2 if it is a convex lens it is positive if any lens is negative if if any lens is concave the value of p1 or p2 or 1 by f1 or 1 by f2 will be taken as negative. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. One minute to note it down. Well, if you have done this, we move on to the next set of formula and this next set of formula is valid for two lens only. Now, as you can see, you have two lens. This is lens number one. It happens to be a convex lens, not a problem. It could be concave. This is lens number two. This also happens to be a concave lens, convex lens. It could be a concave. One could be convex, other could be concave. Doesn't matter. Now they are placed a distance d apart. Do all of you see this? Can I have raised hand that we all see this, sir? The difference between this one and the previous one. In the previous one, they were uh, in contact. Now they are uh, apart from each other. In this case, if they are placed a distance d apart, we call this combination as two thin lenses are placed at a distance d. In that case, the formula of 1 by f becomes 1 by f will be equal to 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2 minus d upon f1 f2 or the formula of power becomes p1 plus p2 minus d times p1 p2 remember sign convention has to be used if the lens is convex it is positive if the lens is concave it is negative do we understand this yes sir yes sir no sir then sir Please note down the formula, sir, with the diagram, sir. I'll give you a minute, sir. Well, then we move on to our topic that we were discussing. Remember, we had one single lens and we had cut into two. Yes or no? Remember, uh, these two are the cut lenses. This is the upper part and this is the lower part. Do we understand this? Upper part and lower part of a single lens which was cut into two pieces. They both have focal length F. Do you remember this? What we had done just now? Yes, sir. Now, if you put both of these as like this, and we have seen that 1 by f will be equal to 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2. In this case, if I put both the lens in contact, 
the focal length of the combination will become f by 2 the focal length f dash and the power of the combination will become two times the power do we understand this yes sir if i cut a lens into half and put both the halves together in the in this fashion erect then the focal length of the combination will become f by 2 and the power of the combination will become two times p but if i put it in the way number two and what is way number one and way number two i will show you on the big screen and i hope you can uh, see it on your big screen now not now now this is my arrangement number one in arrangement number one what i have done is i have put them in the same uh, configuration both are ups up upside is up downside is down in the second combination what i have done one lens is erect and the other is inverted do we see this bacha yes sir difference between diagram number one and diagram number two in diagram number one what was happening was their power were getting added so the total power was becoming two times p but here what is happening their power is getting subtracted one focal length is positive but the other focal length turns out to be negative. Do we understand this? Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Please draw the diagram, sir, of both the configurations, sir. Okay, sir. And then you can note down the formula for power. The formula for power and the focal length in the two cases. In the first case, red case, the focal length becomes F by 2 power becomes two times of p in the second case one by f becomes zero or f dash the total focal length becomes equal to infinite it starts to behave like a plane mirror do we understand this plane lens you can just see to it it starts to behave like a glass slab you can say and is power p dash becomes zero this is case number two do we understand this bacha all these are questions that might come in your examination hall i'll give you a minute to note it down i'll be noting it down yes sir great sir we can now move on to the next part and in the next part what we have done is we have cut the lens along the vertical plane do we see this vertical plane yes sir previously we have cut it horizontally around the horizontal plane now what we have done and you will see it on your big screens now we have cut it along the vertical if you cut it along the vertical, it was a biconvex or an equiconvex lens. You get two lenses, lens number one, lens number two. Both are plano convex lenses, but you can see the focal length of each part becomes two times f. When we had cut it along the horizontal, focal length remains same. Intensity becomes one by four. Do we remember this? Yes, sir. Here, the focal length 
becomes twice. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. What about the intensity, bacha? Will the intensity change or will the intensity remain same? Will the intensity change or will the intensity remain same? Tell me. Remain same, sir. Why will it remain same? That is the correct answer. Intensity will remain same because the diameter has remained same. The aperture has remained same. Do we understand this? Can I have raised hands? Yes, sir. So, if the same lens is cut into equal parts by vertical plane, the focal length of each part will be double, but the intensity will remain same. For the original lens, we are talking about EQ convex lens. That was the focal length for the cut part. This is the focal length. And you can see this focal length is two times the original focal length. So these are the things you will have to note. Apart from this diagram, I'll give you a minute to win it. Then we come to the next part. And the next part is simply how many images will, will be formed if I have a lens and I have different uh, material or I line it with different materials which are having different refractive index. I hope you can uh, see this diagram, Bacha. Yes, sir. What I have done here is I have a lens, but I have coated it with different materials. Here at the top, if you see this glass as refractive index mu1, then I have another glass or coating with refractive index mu2. Then the third part is having refractive index mu1. Fourth part is having refractive index mu2. And the fifth part is having refractive index mu1. So even though there are five parts, the refractive index only changes from 1 to 2, 1 to 2, and so on. Do we see this diagram? Yes, sir. Many questions have come on diagrams like this. And then they ask you, how many images are formed by an object? If I place an object in front of this lens, how many images will be formed? Now, if such a question comes, this point that we are going to discuss will help you out. What do you think will be the number of images? If I may ask you, what do you think? How many images will be formed by this lens? Can anyone tell me? How many images will be formed by this lens? Can anyone tell me? Well, the answer is two. This will form two images because the number of images is equal to the number of refractive index. If a lens is made up of five different materials, it will find it will form five different images because the focal length, if you look at the lens maker's formula, one by F is proportional to mu minus one where mu is the refractive index of the medium of the lens with respect to the medium so the focal length of any part will be proportional to or one by f will be proportional to mu minus one if i have five different mu's i will have five different focal length and i will have five different images if in this case i have only even though I have five parts, I have only two different mu's. Two different mu's means two different focal lengths. And therefore, the number of images will be only two. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Please note it down while I give you the time. Then. Again, a very important point, and this question can come in various ways. It can come in the form of a convex lens, as you can see. It can come in the form of concave lens, as you can see. 
Remember, focal length of a lens depends on the wavelength of light. And this is what you got to remember. One by F is proportional to mu minus one. We have already seen that. But this mu minus one is also proportional to one by lambda. This mu minus one is proportional to one by lambda. That means the focal length of lens, we will see how mu and lambda are related in a chapter, in a topic known as prism. We will see some formulae. Right now, you can just uh, remember it like this. One by F is proportional to mu minus one, which is also proportional to one by lambda. That means focal length is proportional to lambda. Focal length, the wavelength of red light is more than the wavelength of violet light. Therefore, the focal length for the red light will be more than the focal length of the violet light. Do we understand this? Can I have some reason that we understand this? So what do you see here? Uh, if, you, if you have a ray of white light, white light, remember, consists of seven colors. If you have a ray of white light, which is coming from infinity, violet, the focal length will be smallest. So violet light will be refracted at the nearest point, but the red light will be refracted or will be coming. The focal length will be highest. So the red light will be focused at the farthest point. Same thing here. Violet is nearest to the lens. Red light the focus will be farthest from the lens because focal length for red is more than the focal length for violet because wavelength of red is more than the wavelength of violet. Do we understand this? Can I have some reason? Very important point. This can come in different, different types of question. Remember the diagram. It can come in the form of a diagram. It can come in the form of a algebraic or word wala question. Please note it down. Very, very, very important. Okay, sir. Now what you have to understand, sometimes I've seen this question where instead of making it of a different material, they darken it or they blacken it. Now, once they blacken any part of the lens, it will not be, rays will not be passing through. There will not be any refraction. As you can see from the ray diagram, nothing passes through this black part. Do you understand this? Then they ask, Yes, what will happen? What type of image will be formed? Remember, even if you cover the half of the lens with a black paper, so no refraction takes place, intensity will be reduced because the aperture has reduced. Intensity will be reduced, but complete image may be formed. Complete image will be formed. They can give you four options like this. Half image is formed, intensity is full. Full image is formed, intensity is half. Half image is formed and full intensity. Half image with half intensity, full image with full intensity. So out of those four options, which will be the correct option? Full image with less intensity. Do we understand this? This is how questions are framed and this is how you use what you know to solve the questions. Can I have raised that, that you understand this? Okay, I'll give you a minute to write it down. All of us, we are doing summertime sun goggles. The sun goggles are something like this. Uh, it has obviously two refracting surfaces. The radius of curvature of both these refracting surfaces are same. Do you see this, Bacha? And they are also, both the refractive surfaces are positive. The radius of curvature are positive. So one is concave, the other one is convex. One is convex, the other one is concave. Do we understand this? Of the same radius of curvature. So what happens, my dear friends? The focal length becomes infinite. 
the power becomes zero and sun goggles they're only for style and to reduce the intensity and to give a good look and to make you see clearer but they don't have any power they have two reflecting surfaces both of same radius of curvature if one is convex as you can see r1 is convex r2 is concave do we understand this are do we understand this or we have gone okay please note it down let's move ahead and see what is next and the next point is what we have discussed already i told you that before also i'm going to tell you that again also if the refractive index of the medium is less than the refractive index of the lens then convex lens will behave as convex lens concave lens will behave as concave lens so a convex lens will remain convex a concave lens will remain concave as long as the refractive index of the medium is less than the refractive index of the lens do we understand this everyone if the medium has a refractive index less than the refractive index of the lens it will always behave in the same way convex remains convex concave remains convex do we understand this yes sir i'll give you a minute to note it down we move on to the next case where the refractive index of the medium is same as the refractive index of the lens now if the medium and the lens have the same refractive index the rays will just pass like a glass slab do we understand this as you can see there is nothing happening to the rays the rays are just passing as if nothing was there in their way that means the focal length of this lens becomes infinite or the power of this lens become zero this will behave as a glass plate or a glass slab do we understand this yes sir if the refractive index of the medium is less than the lens it behaves as the same lens but if they are equal both are equal then the lens does not remain a lens it simply becomes a glass plate it could be given in the in form of a diagram so remember how the diagram looks remember how the wording looks mu is same for both medium as well as the lens lens does not remain a lens it becomes a glass slab a minute to note it down well now the obvious question is what will happen if the refractive index of the medium is more than the refractive index of the lens the answer to which i have already given to you the answer to which i have already given to you if i place the lens in a medium where the refractive index of the medium is more than the refractive index of the lens this will happen can anyone tell me what is happening here i have marked with arrows this will happen can anyone tell me what is happening here look at the arrow look at the diagram what is happening here when the refractive index of the medium is less convex behaves as convex when the refractive index are equal it behaves as a sheet slab what happens if the refractive index of the medium is more than the refractive index of the lens yes what is the answer well the answer is very simple convex lens will behave as concave instead of converging uh, instead of converging the convex Diver. convex lens becomes diverging and concave, concave lens, lens become converge 
converging lens. So they will change their nature. If an air bubble is formed in water, it will yeah. behave as a concave lens. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Please note it down, sir. Once okay, more, sir. sir. Okay, beta. Then again, we move on to Newton's formula. We had seen Newton's formula for mirror. You can also see Newton's formula for lens. This is the lens. It is a convex lens, valid for convex lenses. Object is here. The object distance is U. The image distance is V. X1 is the distance of object from focus F1. X2 is the distance of object from the focus F2. Remember, Newton's formula is very simple. The focal length F of the lens will be root over X1, X2. Do we understand this? What you got to do yes, is... Sir. What you got to do, beta, is draw the diagram very clearly, very clearly. And I will show you that diagram on the bigger screen so that you can draw it very clearly. Remember what is X1. X1 is the distance of the object from F1. X2 is the distance of the op image from F2. F is equal to root over X1, X2. This is what you need to draw. And that is what you need to write. I will give you, I will give you a minute to do the needful. <clears throat> that takes us to this displacement method. And uh, many a times I have uh, seen that uh, the students uh, get confused with the displacement method. So I will try to illustrate this distance displacement method point wise and you will have to write it point wise. So the heading would be displacement method. What is this displacement method? Point number one. Point number one. This method is used to determine the focal length of a convex lens. Remember the key word is convex lens. It is only used, it can be only used to find out the focal length of a convex lens in laboratory. Do we understand this? Yes or no? No, yes. Yes, sir. It's only valid for a convex lens. This is point number one. Point number two is what is written below. If you have a convex lens of focal length F, it is placed between an object and a screen. The distance between the object and screen is D, capital D. If this capital D is more than 4F, there are two positions of lens to get a sharp image of the object. This is how it works. Now, first you will write this point as point number one and point number two from the sheet. And then I will try to explain it with a diagram. So after that, you will draw the diagram. What you have to understand here is this displacement method is only valid, number one, for convex lens. Number two, the value of D should be more than 4F. And what is this D? This D is the distance between object and the screen. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Once you note down these two points word by word, then I will show you a diagram. And in the diagram, I will try to make more sense of what we are talking. You have a minute to note down these points. Then I will move on to the diagram. What I showed you in the last slide. Now is the time to draw this diagram. As you can see, this diagram will make you understand what I was talking about. This is the object, as you can see. This is the convex lens. Remember, it is only valid for a convex lens. This is the object and this is the screen 
where we are going to form the image. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. This object and the screen are separated by a distance capital D. Now, what does this displacement measure, uh, method tell us? That if this D is greater than 4F, if this D is greater than 4F, which is the focal length of the lens, you will have two positions where you will get a real image or a sharp image. For two positions, you will get a real and a sharp image. If I call this as position number one, for the same configuration, I can move this lens to a different position and still get an image on the screen. Do we understand this? So this is the diagram that you have to draw. This is what I mean to say. This is the first position that I have drawn. In this first position, you are going to get a sharp image. There will be one more position where you are going to get a sharp image. Please note down this diagram. In the previous diagram, I had shown you one position where the image will be formed here. I am showing you both the positions and I hope that I will try to make, uh, try to make uh, more sense out of this. Uh, I will mark position number one by the letter one. So this is number one position. Here we have object distance u1, image distance v1, and you can see the distance between the object O and the screen where you are getting the image is given by capital D. Do we see this? Yes or no? No, yes. Yes, sir. Now, what I have done is I have displaced this lens from position number one to position number two. And can you see this position number two? Yes or no? No or yes? Yes, sir. Here, the object distance is U2 and the distance of image is V2. But again, the distance between the object and the image is same as D. I have not shifted that. I have only shifted the lens. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. This I2 is the image formed by the position 2. This I1 is the image formed by position 1. Is it clear to everyone? Yes, sir. This is the next diagram that you are supposed to draw with all these things that you have to understand. U1, V1, I1. U2, V2, I2, capital D, and X. X is the shift in the position of the convex lens. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. I'll give you a minute to note this diagram. Now, whatever we, uh, is there on the screen, you will write it and remember it. If D is less than 4F, D will be less than 4F, there will be no position of lens possible because the image that you will get would be imaginary. Do we understand this? If the distance D is less than four times of F, there is no position of the lens possible where you can get a real image. If D is equal to 4F, the value of U, and this will come as question, the value of U will be D by 2 will be equal to 2F. So you place the object as 2F and you will get the image as 2F. The magnification will be equal to minus 1 in this case. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Please note down first two cases. Case number one, D is less than 4F. Case number two, D is equal to 4F. Then we'll move on to case number three.
if I have the value of capital D more than 4F, if I have the value of capital D as more than 2F, more than 4F, sorry, there are two positions of the lens for which real image is formed. There are two positions. If D is greater than 4F, there are two positions. For position number one, the value of U1 is this. For position number two, the value of U2 is this. If you can remember this, if you can remember any one of this, you can understand the second one. The only difference between the two is in number one, we have minus here, and in number two, we have plus here. Can you remember this for me, Bacha? Yes, sir. Because I have seen that they've asked this question on displacement method in JE, need in different, 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 different ways. The more the number of things that you can remember about this, the more is the chances that it will come and more is the chance that you will be able to score marks. I will end today's class here on this note. We will continue with the displacement method in the next class where we'll be seeing some questions as well. What we have seen today is what happens when you cut the lens into horizontal plane. What happens? You get two lenses whose focal length is same, but aperture becomes half, intensity becomes one by four times. Yes or no? Yes, sir. If I cut the lens from the vertical plane, then what happens? Tell me. The focal length becomes two times, but the two intensity times. remains same. same. Then we have seen if I have different, different mu's in the same lens, the number of images will be same as the number of mu. Two. Yes, not two beta. If I have two different mu's, number of images two. If I have four different mu's, number of images four. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. We have also seen that if I have a lens and I cover the lower portion with a black paper, I will have the full image, but the intensity would be less. Then we were discussing about the displacement method. We have seen that if D is smaller than 4F, no position is possible where you get a real image. If D is equal to 4F, there is only one position where U is 2F and V is also 2F. In that case, magnification becomes minus 1. If the value of D is greater than 4F, then there are two positions possible. I have told you the value of U1 in both the positions. We'll continue on this in the next class. I hope to see you tomorrow at the same time. We will wind up this part and probably start with the last part of this chapter, which is prism. Everyone loves prisms. We'll do that in the next class. I hope you love the class. Take care. Okay, Eat healthy. Bye, sir. Take care, sir. Take care, beta. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.